Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Cartoon Art Museum. And uh, yeah, and all of you for being here. This is awesome. And thanks for being patient, too. I know it's been a little bit of a, a bustle to get here, but thanks for sticking around. And actually, thanks for sticking around for the last seven years. That's what, <laughs> that's what my talk's going to be about. That sticks this time. Um, yeah, I'd love to do um, a Q&A because the book now has been out for, for more than a week, so many of you may already have a relationship with it, so I'd love to talk about ideas and content in that forum. Um, but in the meantime, I also brought a bunch of images that focus on, on process, um, mainly to explain what I've been doing for those last seven years. Um, so these are my, the four comic books of my career. Goodbye Chunky Rice, Blankets, Carnet de Voyage, and then Habibi, and that, that painful seven year gap. Uh, so my apologies. Thank you for being here, thanks for, for waiting. Uh, the, the images I brought are, are, are partly a defense of this new process of graphic novel making. You know, comics used to be a very immediate and kind of minimalist format. Uh, the daily, daily comic strip was this instant medium, and now it's more akin to, to novel making, where the artist holds up in his cavern for years um, before being able to release anything. And hopefully they don't go too crazy in, during that span. Um, and there's a little high school Craig. Uh, people, <laughs> the, the origins of Rabibi, I mean, first off, whenever I'm finishing a book, I'm totally sick of whatever I'm drawing. And so in the case of Blankets, I was sick of drawing little high school Craig. Um, and also sick of uh, those mundane sort of Midwestern snowscapes. I'm always really restless to work on something totally new. And uh, I was considering two trajectories, either doing um, a fantastical epic, kind of typical of comic books, uh, or something nonfiction and journalistic, inspired by Joe Sacco and this work he does that has like this social and political relevance. And Habibi ended up meeting somewhere in the middle. Um, so some of you haven't read it, some of you have. It's, it's uh, a fairy tale that takes place out of any specific time or geography. And, uh, but it draws on a lot of contemporary topics around sexuality and religion and uh, maybe foremost, water crisis. And uh, where did it begin? It began actually, actually one of the reasons I didn't go the route as Joe Sacco could have been laziness. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't really in the position to, uh, to delve into the sort of meticulous research journalism that Joe has like the, the, the power to do um, because I had these two characters that arrived instantly um, almost in a subconscious way, to Dola and Zam. Um, and I knew right away, I, I knew these characters, and I knew that they were child slaves. I didn't yet know what world they inhabited, or what this book would be, or what stories informed their lives. Um, but they were already there. They were sort of like a, a little subconscious nugget, a little gift from the subconscious. And, uh, and so I was, when I was trying to figure out why and how Dodola and Zam were, were childhood slaves. I was researching the history of slavery, which of course um, is, is more prominent now than ever before in human history. Like there's never, since the beginning of mankind, you know, humans have enslaved others. Um, I think uh, kind of reviewing this history, I was sort of fascinated and horrified to learn of other, you know, um, actually the, the East African sort of Arab slave trade that took place 700 years before our own Holocaust. And, and as part, of, part of it was I was lured into the, the, this, some of the exotic elements, actually, this Saharan-like caravans, and uh, Timbuktu, and, uh, and the, the, um, a lot of the different elements around it. In fact, I got drawn into this sort of Arabian Nights landscape, and I was reading 1001 Nights for the first time, and, and uh, really enjoying it for all its like lurid, violent, adventurous, humorous, scatological detail. But then I became, uh, began to wonder if all those elements were actually uh, imposed on it by Richard Burton. I was reading the, uh, you know, English, Richard Burton translation of these Arabic, or an in collection, anthology of these Arabic folk tales. I wasn't sure if all these details were actually put there by him. 
It was a, this form of orient, Orientalism where it was being filtered through a British colonist's eyes. 